A shy gentleman was preparing to board a plane when he heard that the Pope was on the same flight. This is exciting, thought the gentleman. I've always been a big fan of the Pope. Perhaps I'll be able to see him in person. Imagine his surprise when the Pope sat down in the seat next to him for the flight. Still, the gentleman was too shy to speak to the pontiff. Shortly after takeoff, the Pope began a crossword puzzle. This is fantastic, thought the gentleman. I'm really good at crosswords. Perhaps if the Pope gets stuck, he'll ask me for assistance. Almost immediately, the Pope turned to the gentleman and said, Excuse me, but do you know a four-letter word referring to a woman that ends with the letters U and T? Only one word leapt to mind. My goodness, thought the gentleman. I can't tell the Pope that. There must be another word. The gentleman thought for quite a while, then it hit him. Turning to the Pope, the gentleman said, I think the word you're looking for is ant. Of course, said the Pope. Do you have an eraser? One morning, a man tells a co-worker that her hair smells nice. The woman gets enraged, storms into her supervisor's office, and declares she's filing a sexual harassment suit. Come on, says the supervisor. What's wrong with a guy telling you your hair smells nice? He's a freaking midget. It's the spring of 1957, and Bobby goes to pick up his date. He's a pretty hip guy with his own car. When he goes to the front door, the girl's father answers and invites him in. Carrie's not ready yet, so why don't you have a seat? He asks. That's cool, says Bobby. Carrie's father asks Bobby what they're planning to do. Bobby replies politely that they will probably just go to the soda shop or a movie. Carrie's father responds, Why don't you two go out and screw? I hear all the kids are doing it. Naturally, this comes as a quite a surprise to Bobby, so he asks Carrie's dad to repeat it. Yeah, says Carrie's father. Carrie really likes to screw. She'll screw all night if we let her. Well, this just made Bobby's eyes light up and immediately revised his plans for the evening. A few minutes later, Carrie comes downstairs in her little poodle skirt and announces that she's ready to go. Almost breathless with anticipation, Bobby escorts his date out the front door. About 20 minutes later, a thoroughly disheveled Carrie rushes back into the house, slams the door behind her, and screams at her father, Damn it, Daddy! The twist! It's called the twist! A mother is walking with her five-year-old son through the zoo when they reach the elephant cage. The boy looks with amazement at the large beast and asks his mom, What's that long thing hanging down from the elephant? His mother replies, That's his trunk. The little boy goes, I know that, the thing to the other side of the trunk. The mom replies, Oh, that's his tail. The boy goes, I know that. No, what's that big thing hanging down in between the trunk and tail? The mother, wanting to avoid this subject altogether, just says, Oh, that's nothing, and whisks him off to the next exhibit. Two weeks later, he goes to the same zoo with his dad. They are at the elephant exhibit, and he asks his dad, What's that long thing hanging down from the elephant? The dad replies, That's his trunk. No, behind that, says the kid. Oh, well, that's his tail, replies the father. No, in between the trunk and the tail, yells the kid. His dad replies, Son, that's the elephant's penis. The kid, a bit puzzled, tells his dad, But mom said it was nothing. His father replied, Son, that's because your mom's been spoiled. A young female teacher was giving an assignment to her sixth grade class one day. It was a large assignment, so she started writing high up on the chalkboard. Suddenly there was a giggle from one of the boys in the class. She quickly turned and asked, What's so funny, Pat? I just saw one of your garters. Get out of my classroom, she yells. I don't want to see you for three days. The teacher turns back to the chalkboard. Realizing she had forgotten to title the assignment, she reaches to the very top of the chalkboard. Suddenly, there is an even louder giggle from another male student. She quickly turns and asks, What's so funny, Billy? I just saw both of your garters. Again, she yells, Get out of my classroom. This time, the punishment is more severe. I don't want to see you for three weeks. Embarrassed and frustrated, she drops the eraser when she turns around again. So she bends over to pick it up. This time, there is a burst of laughter from another male student. She quickly turns to see little Johnny leaving the classroom. Where do you think you're going? She asks. From what I just saw, my school days are over. There was this guy who always went out drinking with his friends. He would always come home very late. One night while he was at the bar, he told them his secret for being able to sneak in late. When I walk in the house before the wife can say anything, I lay her down, take off her panties, and give her the best oral sex she's ever had until she has such an orgasm that she falls into a deep sleep. Then I wash up and go to bed. By morning, she is so pleased she doesn't care what time I came home.
One of his friends thinks this is a great idea, so he stays out late, comes home, sneaks into the bedroom, gives his wife the best oral sex she's ever had, and goes to wash up. His wife walks into the bathroom, obviously upset that he's home so late. Hey, why aren't you sleeping? He asks. I was, but I came in to tell you that we've got to sleep on the couch tonight, because my mother is sleeping in our bedroom. A mother is walking with her five-year-old son through the zoo when they reach the elephant cage. The boy looks with amazement at the large beast and asks his mom, What's that long thing hanging down from the elephant? His mother replies, That's his trunk. The little boy goes, I know that, the thing to the other side of the trunk. The mom replies, Oh, that's his tail. The boy goes, I know that. No, what's that big thing hanging down in between the trunk and tail? The mother, wanting to avoid this subject altogether, just says, Oh, that's nothing, and whisks him off to the next exhibit. Two weeks later, he goes to the same zoo with his dad. They are at the elephant exhibit, and he asks his dad, What's that long thing hanging down from the elephant? The dad replies, That's his trunk. No, behind that, says the kid. Oh, well, that's his tail, replies the father. No, in between the trunk and the tail, yells the kid. His dad replies, Son, that's the elephant's penis. The kid, a bit puzzled, tells his dad, But mom said it was nothing. His father replied, Son, that's because your mom's been spoiled. A man's boat capsizes in the middle of the ocean. He washes up on a deserted island with nothing but the clothes on his back. He builds a small shelter and finds food and water, but he misses civilization more with each passing day. While walking on the beach one day, he sees a beautiful woman emerge from the ocean wearing a scuba tank and a wetsuit. She says, you look like you could use a smoke. She unzips a pocket on one arm of her wetsuit, pulls a Cuban cigar from inside and hands it to the man. The man smokes slowly and tells her that it is the finest cigar that he has ever smoked. How about a drink? The woman asks. She unzips another pocket, reaches in, and pulls out a small flask. It's a 17-year-old single malt scotch aged in oak, the woman tells him. The man is almost beside himself with joy as he sips the drink. The woman then begins unzipping the front of her wetsuit. Want to play around? She asks. Jesus Christ, the man says. You have a set of golf clubs in there, too? A bus carrying only ugly people crashes into an oncoming truck, and everyone inside dies. They then get to meet their maker, and because of the grief they have experienced, he decides to grant them one wish each before they enter paradise. They're all lined up, and God asks the first one what the wish is. I want to be gorgeous, and so God snaps his fingers, and it is done. The second one in line hears this and says, I want to be gorgeous too. Another snap of his fingers, and the wish is granted. This goes on for a while, but when God is halfway down the line, the last guy in line starts laughing. When there are only ten people left, this guy is rolling on the floor laughing. Finally, God reaches this guy and asks him what his wish will be. The guy calms down and says, make them all ugly again. A very flat-chested woman finally decided she needed a bra and set out to the mall in search of one in her size. She entered an upscale department store and approached the sales lady in lingerie. Do you have a size 28 AA bra? The clerk haughtily replied in the negative, so she left the store and proceeded to another department store where she is rebuffed in much the same manner. After a third try at another department store in the mall, she had become disgusted. Leaving the mall, she drove to Kmart. Marching up to the sales clerk, she unbuttoned and threw open her blouse, yelling, Do you have anything for this? The lady looked closely at her and replied, Have you tried Clearasil? A woman and a baby were in the doctor's examining room waiting for the doctor to come in for the baby's first exam. The doctor arrived and examined the baby, checked his weight, and being a little concerned, asked if the baby was breastfed or bottle-fed. Breastfed, she replied. Well, strip down to your waist, the doctor ordered. She did. He pinched her nipples, pressed, kneaded, and rubbed both breasts for a while in a very professional and detailed examination. Motioning to her to get dressed, the doctor said, No wonder this baby is underweight. You don't have any milk. I know, she said. I'm his grandma, but I'm glad I came. An atheist was walking through the woods. What majestic trees! What powerful rivers! What beautiful animals! He said to himself. As he was walking alongside the river, he heard a rustling in the bushes behind him. He turned to look. He saw a seven-foot grizzly bear charge towards him. He ran as fast as he could up the path. He looked over his shoulder and saw that the bear was closing in on him. He looked over his shoulder again, and the bear was even closer. He tripped and fell on the ground. He rolled over to pick himself up, but saw that the bear was right on top of him. 
reaching for him with his left paw and raising his right paw to strike him. At that instant, the atheist cried out, Oh my God! Time stopped. The bear froze. The forest was silent. As a bright light shone upon the man, a voice came out of the sky. You deny my existence for all these years, teach others I don't exist, and even credit creation to cosmic accident. Do you expect me to help you out of this predicament? Am I to count you as a believer? The atheist looked directly into the light. It would be hypocritical of me to suddenly ask you to treat me as a Christian now. But perhaps you could make the bear a Christian. Very well, said the voice. The light went out. The sounds of the forest resumed. And the bear dropped his right paw, brought both paws together, bowed his head and spoke. Lord, bless this food which I am about to receive from thy bounty through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lulu was a prostitute. One day there was a raid. All the prostitutes were lined up outside the police station as they took them in one by one. As Lulu stood in line, she saw her grandma coming down the street and was so ashamed. Grandma didn't know her occupation. Grandma stopped to say hi and asked what the line was for. Lulu, saving face, said that the police were giving away fresh oranges to those waiting. Grandma said wonderful. She loved oranges and got at the end of the line. When the policeman got to the end and saw her, he was amazed. He said, how the heck do you do this at your age? She said, I just take out my teeth, rip the skin back and suck them dry. The policeman fainted. One Sunday morning, everyone in one bright, beautiful, tiny town got up early and went to the local church. Before the services started, the townspeople were sitting in their pews and talking about their lives, their families, etc. Suddenly, Satan appeared at the front of the church. Everyone started screaming and running for the front entrance, trampling each other in a frantic effort to get away from evil incarnate. Soon everyone was evacuated from the church, except for one elderly gentleman who sat calmly in his pew, not moving, seemingly oblivious to the fact that God's ultimate enemy was in his presence. Now this confused Satan a bit, so he walked up to the man and said, Don't you know who I am? The man replied, Yep, sure do. Satan asked, Aren't you afraid of me? Nope, sure ain't, said the man. Satan was a little perturbed at this and queried, Why aren't you afraid of me? The man calmly replied, Been married to your sister for over 48 years. My wife, who is blonde, came running up to me in the driveway the other day, just jumping for joy. I didn't know why she was jumping for joy, but I thought, What the heck? And I starting jumping up and down along with her. She said, Honey, I have some really great news for you. I said, great, tell me what you're so happy about. She stopped jumping and was breathing heavily from all the jumping up and down when she told me that she was pregnant. I was ecstatic. We had been trying for a while, so I grabbed her and kissed her on the lips and told her, that's great, I couldn't be happier. Then she said, oh honey, there's more. I asked, what do you mean more? She said, well, we are not having just one baby, we are going to have twins. Amazed at how she could know so soon after getting pregnant, I asked her how she knew. She said, well, that was the easy part. I went to Walmart and bought the Twin Pack Home Pregnancy Test Kit, and both tests came out positive. This farmer has 500 hens but no rooster, so he goes to his neighbor and asks him if he could buy a rooster for $100. The neighbor says, you can have this rooster. His name's Roy. He'll get all your hens pregnant. He's a real stud. So the farmer takes him home and says, It's your first day, so take it slow, okay? The farmer puts Roy in the hen house and then hears all the hens crying and yelling. Roy nailed every one of those hens and then nailed a duck and a goose at a pond. The next morning, the farmer finds Roy lying dead with his legs sticking in the air and buzzards circling overhead. The farmer says, Roy, did you have to die? Roy says, Quiet, they're about to land. Three men went to a nightclub looking to pick up chicks. One of the guys saw the hottest chick he'd ever seen. I'm going to talk to her, he said. No, 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 said the other two guys. She'll mess you up real bad. The guy went over and talked to her anyway. They talked for a while and then went back to her apartment and started to get down to business. Minutes in, he had to quit. I can't take it anymore. It's too rough, he said. All right, she said. I'll be back in a minute. A couple of minutes later, she returned and they started again. Now it was really smooth and nice. How did you fix that? He asked. I picked the scabs and let them puss, she replied. After a few years of married life, this guy finds that he is unable to get it up anymore. He goes to his doctor. His doctor tries a few things, but nothing works. Finally, the doctor says to him, this is all in your mind and refers him to a psychiatrist. 
After a few visits to the shrink, the shrink confesses, I am at a loss as to how you could possibly be cured. Finally, the psychiatrist refers him to a witch doctor. The witch doctor tells him, I can cure this, and throws some powder on a flame, and there is a flash with billowing blue smoke. The witch doctor says, This is powerful healing, but you can only use it once a year. All you have to do is say one, two, three, and it shall rise for as long as you wish. The guy then asks the witch doctor, What happens after when it's over? The witch doctor says, All you have to say is one on, two, three, four, and it will go down. But be warned it will not work again for three months. This guy goes home, and that night is ready to surprise his wife with the good news. So he is lying in bed with her and says, One bond, two, three. And suddenly he gets a hard on. His wife turns over and says, What did you say one, two, three for? 